Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to look at this. What is it? It's a PoE splitter. PoE, of course, stands for power over ethernet. This is really a two port switch, not a splitter, but I want to use it like a splitter. So why not just run a second wire? Well, the original wire was run in November through an empty attic. Now it's August in Memphis, very hot, and the attic is full. I want to make this an outside only project. First, let's see how this thing works in the air conditioned comfort of our house. I've got two new turret cameras here. Normally I'd run two wires like this. So this thing is going to act as a splitter so that I only need one wire back to the wiring closet. The two ports grouped together are the output and the separate port is where I will connect the original wire. So after I hook it up, everything works fine. That's it. Really simple to connect. No configuration. It just works. You can see the lights flashing on the switch here. Interesting. One port is labeled out and the other is camera, but they both work the same. I've got cameras hooked up to both. This is a miniature device, so I tried to see if it would fit in various junction boxes. It really would not fit in any of the single gang junction boxes I tried. Uh, almost, but not quite. Maybe with some sawing or cutting, but I'm not really interested in that. I just was doing that to see if I ever needed one of these uh, you know, in the house in the future. This one was a, is an outdoor single gang junction box, and I might be able to shave down some of those plastic things, but... Wouldn't fit in there either. Even if I could get the box in, the wires would still, you know, be exposed. So if I ever did need to use this indoors, it looks like it'll fit just fine in a two gang junction box or one of those little uh, plates that you can kind of attach to sheetrock to uh, mount it inside the wall. But for this project, I don't need a junction box. I'm going to use this. This is a circular junction box, which is specifically designed for my camera. And the ad on Amazon shows this little switch mounted inside one. So problem solved, right? Well, wrong. Unfortunately, it looks like it'll fit and it does sort of lie flat in there and I think all the wires would fit in there. However, the junction box is not really standard. It has a solid piece of metal that protrudes. There's no way it's going to close. So how are we going to handle that? Half job, get stuff done? Uh, yeah, that's right. Time for a hack job here. My first thought is to look inside the case to see if there's any additional space to be had and uh, looked for a screw couldn't find one eventually got the case popped apart here's a picture of the bottom circuit board and here's the top of it just uh you know typical electronics got some chips in there whatnot so as it turns out removing that cover got us the space we needed left inside its case i can't close the camera mount however if i leave only the bottom board and panel success so I ended up tie wrapping the bottom plastic part on to prevent shorts and also remove that, uh, that metal convenience hanger thing. That, and then, so I should be able to put in the switch and then the top plate and then the camera plate and then finally the camera. The original wire is going to come in from the back, connect to one of those ports. The other one, the power of the pre-existing camera is going to have to come out one of these side ports by unscrewing one of these little covers to preserve space. I've got this flat ethernet cable. I'm going to try to just chop that down to be the shortest patch cable ever. And that should uh, not take up much space inside the box. So here it is. I've got it soldered and heat shrinked and ran it through my little ethernet tester. And it seems to be working fine to connect the pre-existing bullet camera. I'm going to run a short mono price patch cable out the side of the junction box. I need to put this waterproof connector on the end of it to seal it. This waterproof connector with little finagling i can actually get the patch cable through it without any uh, cutting or anything and it would connect just like this to the old camera it's compatible even though it's a different brand the last thing we need to figure out is how to get the patch cable into the junction box but not allow a bunch of moisture and bugs in so since this connector is plastic i'm just going to try to notch it out so i notched it out and sanded it down a little bit and that works pretty well a little bit of silicone on that and it will be fine so now it's a matter of just moving outside and hooking everything up. First, we mounted the junction box over the original wire. Then we just layered on each piece, with the uh, starting with the switch, the plate, and ending with the camera. Before starting all this, I disconnected the power. So the final step is to reconnect the original wire to the power injector. Did I mention I'm using a power injector? Uh, no reason to assume it wouldn't work with a switch that's integrated. Everything is working. The camera looks good. I get a great signal from both cameras and I'm very happy with this product. We'll see how long it lasts. The warranty is only for one year, but most electronics last a lot longer than that. And with the added heat sink and the cover gone, hopefully it's more amenable to those hot outdoor temperatures. 
At the time of recording this video, this device was available for $38.99 on Amazon. There is a limitation on the number of watts you can use with it. Each camera has to be under 8 watts, and mine were. So I'd probably investigate the specs if you want to try it. But uh, that's about it for this video. See you next time for another awesome video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.